Hey, this is Math 2, Unit 10, worksheet number one. This is another one of the options that you could have had. So the first option was the table and the chart like we did, and so you can check out the other video there. This one is just some more practice uh, graphing the parabolas for the quadratic functions. All right, so first of all, number one, to identify the vertex of each parabola and state whether it is a maximum or a minimum. And so the vertex is that, that point at which everything comes together in the parabola. And so in this case here, our vertex is located right there, which is at point negative two comma, and we'll show it negative two for the X value, and the Y value is up at one. We say negative two comma one. And because it's curving down, we would say this one has a minimum value. Over here, our vertex is located right there, which is at one, two, and uh, three for the X value, and the Y value is at one, two. That's where that's gonna be located at. And in terms of being maximum or minimum, because it's going up and down, that is the high point. We would call that a maximum. All right, I'm gonna do some of the odd ones here, just to kind of help you out with your homework, all right? So graphing the function, we're gonna identify the vertex, the domain, which is the X values, the range, which are the Y values for the function. All right, so this part here is plugging the numbers into that equation, and you can create a little table there. This is something you've been doing for a long time. Uh, so now we're gonna use some squared values and you're good to go. So negative three squared is nine, negative two squared is four, negative one squared is one, zero squared is zero. And this is gonna reflect across. So we just can put the same, oops, same numbers down over here. And this becomes zero, one, four, and nine. All right, so our vertex, that's gonna be the point at which it bends. Now this one again, what do we, what do we know? It's positive. So we're gonna be curving up. We can tell that by just that part there. And for the vertex, we're gonna say, well, there's no C value. And our C value is, when you do standard form, it's A X squared plus B X plus C. So this value here is a C value, and that often is gonna indicate where the vertex is gonna be. In this case, there is no C value. And so our vertex is gonna be located right here where it makes the dip, the curve, or comes back up. It'll be at zero comma zero. Our domain, in this case, is gonna be all value, all real values for x, no problem there. And for the y value, we would say it's everything greater than or equal to zero. Again, what we can determine about this part here, I can say again because we just, I just did the last worksheet, um, is that because it's positive, it's gonna be greater than or equal to, and this value here comes off of that y vertex value. If I plot this out, you have a zero comma zero right there, okay? At one, we're at one, so we're here and here. At two, we're at four, so one, two, three, four. And you can just reflect it across like that. And then at three, we're at nine. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, one, two, three. And so that's what that one's gonna look like, something along those lines, all right? So that's the idea for that first one there. For the odd, the even ones, I'm not gonna do them, but I'm gonna point out a couple things, right? In this case here, this is a positive x squared, which means our parabola is gonna be going up, okay? We also have a c value right there, which means that our vertex will be at zero comma one, all right? So we're gonna help you out with that part there, just to plug that in, okay? And that's gonna help you out with a range, which would be y will be greater than and equal to one, and of course, the, the range, domain is still the all real values of x. And I'll let you graph that one. Number five, here we have a number now in front of the quadratic. Before we had x squared, now we have two. When I put this whole number there, it's gonna make the graph become skinnier, right? So if x was like this, then two x becomes more like this, all right? It starts to kind of narrow up. If I start using a fraction, which you'll see down to number seven, the fraction one's gonna be much wider, right? And that's the idea, something to keep in mind there. So for number five, we plot in some values here. When I plot in negative two, negative two squared is gonna be four, and four times two is eight. Negative one squared is one, one times two is two, and then we get zero, and then we ref reflect it back across the other way. We can plot this out and put zero, zero right here. And then at the one value, we are at a two, and we're at a two, and then we're at two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Seems funny. 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, but I guess it's okay. And at two, we are at eight there. And so our graph would look something along these lines like that. With our vertex, it's gonna be here. It's a low point at zero comma zero. So that is a minimum. The domain is gonna be all values of X. And the range is Y will be greater than or equal to the vertex value, zero right there. Looking at number seven. Again, this is a fraction one, so it's gonna be wider when we work this out here. Um, and so here we go. So in this case, when we, when we kind of put that in there, here's here's what the space probably is for here. I'm guessing maybe it was a typo, I'm not sure. If I pl plug it in, I end up with one half times negative four squared. Negative four squared is 16, and 16 divided by two is gonna be eight, okay? This next one is one half times negative two squared. Negative two squared is four, and four divided by two is two. For zero, you end up with just zero, and then this reflects across the other way. So once again, I'm at a zero, zero for my vertex here. That's my vertex, zero comma zero. I know it's positive, so I'm gonna be curving up. That's okay. At one, or sorry, actually at a negative two is where they gave me. At, at the two values, we don't do one, at two we are at two, so one, two, and then over here two we are at two, but then at four we're at eight, so one, two, three, four, and then going up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So my value here is eight, and then one, two, three, four, here at eight. So we can see it looks something along these lines, okay? And so again, the idea here, what you wanna be able to notice is that if I just have the x squared, that's what the parabola shape looks like. When I have that whole number, but uh, greater than one, it starts to become a little skinnier. And when I make that fractional value, it's wider, right? There's been no change in any of these for where this lands on the y-axis. That would take place over here like on number six. You have this negative three which tells you that your vertex would be at zero comma negative three, meaning it's gonna start one, two, three, down here for this problem right there. It's gonna start right there, but again, it's positive, so it's still gonna curve up, all right? And that's not accurate, I'm just making one up here. This one has no C value, so it's gonna be a vertex of zero comma zero, but because it's negative, it's gonna finally, and that's the only one here, curve down. So we're gonna curve down at zero comma zero. That's the idea for that page right there. Let's flip it over, it's just on the back side. All right, for number nine, we do have a negative one for us, which is good, work those out for you. We have a negative, which tells me we're gonna be curving down. We have a whole number, not a fraction, so it's gonna be a little bit skinnier, right? It's gonna be a little skinny. And then I don't have a C value, so I'm gonna be at zero comma zero for my vertex. Those are things you can tell by just looking at that with a lot of practice. So vertex, zero comma zero. The domain is gonna be all values of X. And the range is Y is going to be, now be careful here, because it's negative, everything's gonna be less than or equal to zero. And this is the one where you have to be careful because of this negative value that changes the direction of the inequality. Let's plug in some numbers to verify that. So if I put negative two in here, negative two squared is four, and four, negative two squared is four. And so four squared, Sorry, my notes are a little different. Uh, so negative two squared is four, and four times negative three is negative 12. Negative one squared is one, one times negative three is negative three. This is zero, and then we reflect it across the other way. So when I plot this, here I'm at zero, zero is one point, and then we're gonna go to negative three, so one, two, three for the one values. And then the two values are gonna be at 12, which I don't even have on the paper, so I'm out of space. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Let's pretend it's about here. So somewhere down here, okay? So this is gonna look like that. Something along those lines when I graph that out. Much narrower because it, the value here of A is negative three. Okay, that's the idea. Okay, looking at 11 to 14, it says, draw a rough sketch of each quadratic function. It shows you the direction of the graph, right? Up or down, and opening, and the relative width. So the width comes from the A value. So here we have a positive, and it's a whole number, so we're gonna be something along these lines. Here we're at a negative 
and we're at a three. Negative tells me I'm gonna be going down this way. Three tells me it's gonna be skinny. So we're gonna be skinny going down. There's no C value. So we're gonna be something along the lines of this. Okay, skinnier than that one. Here we are at negative, so we're gonna be curving down. We're at a, a one four, so we're gonna be wide. And there's no C value, so we're gonna be wide curving down from zero, zero along those lines. And here, seven thirds is the same as two and one third, right? So even though it's a fraction, notice it's greater than one. So it's still gonna be skinny and it's positive. So we're gonna be here, something along those lines. All right, and down below, we have order each group of quadratic functions from widest to narrowest. So widest is gonna be more of our fraction, narrowest would be our whole number. All right, so here we have a negative two, negative four, and negative three. So the widest will be the smallest number. So we would say it's gonna be negative two x squared, followed by y equals negative three x squared, followed by y equals negative four x squared. All right, over here, looking at widest and narrowest, we have one third, a third, and one six. So the widest will be the smallest fraction, which is actually gonna be the one six. So y equals 1 6 x squared is the, is the widest, followed by y equals 1 third x squared, followed by y equals 3 x squared. All right, and then factoring review real quick, just take a look at what we have here. Um, and so this one is just like what we did on the last worksheet. Okay, so look at your notes for last time. We have x, oh no, that was the other one. Um, so I'm thinking about the option two. 64, I gotta get to 64. I could use things like eight times eight, but eight times eight won't help me get to 30 with eight plus eight, so I'm gonna look at something different. I'm gonna do 32 times two for 64 because 32 minus two can get me to 30. So I know I can put a 32 there, I can put a two there, and I can make this positive, and then I'm gonna subtract two, double check in my outsides and insides. Here I have 32x, and here I have a negative two x. So those things combine, oops, sorry, ran out the page, to make a 30x in the middle. So we're good and that's gonna work. Number 19, I have two square numbers because 11 times 11 is 121. So I can break this apart like so and do x plus 11 and then x minus 11 because the outsides and insides are gonna cancel out and you're left with just the x squared minus 121. And finally, number 21, we have a 2x squared, so I know I have to put a 2x in the front and an x there. I'm gonna play with the values of 12. 12 could be something like 12 times one, it could be six times two, four times three. I'm gonna have to choose between those things to plug them in here and kind of do some guess and check to see what can I use that has to connect with the 2x in order to end up with an 11, right? So let's say, for example, I put a six in here. I put a six in there and a two there. I got 12, but 12 minus two won't get me to 11, so it's not gonna work. I could put a six there and a two there. I have a four and a six. Four plus six gives me a 10, still not 11. So six and two are not going to work. I could try a 12 and one, but again, same idea. If I put a one there and a 12 there, that's the best. 12 minus two can give me a 10, not gonna work. So I'm kind of looking now at the four and the three. So I put a three and a four. Four times two is eight, and then that's a three. Well, eight plus three is 11. That's what I'm looking for. So we'll make both those positive and we're good to go. All right, that's it for today and we'll see you next time.